after a blessing for its European Union ambitions and a pledge of unwavering support from Britain, Ukraine vowed on Saturday to prevail against Moscow. This comes as the country battles Russian assaults in the eastern city of Lysychansk, and multiple locations come under shell and missile attacks. In a video released Saturday, President Vladimir Zelensky is seen paying another visit to troops on the front lines of Ukraine's war against Russia, this time in the southern city of Mykolaiv. The president took pictures and pinned badges on the sleeve of army personnel in what appeared to be an underground shelter. The president's office, nor Zelensky himself, would specify when the visit took place. When Ukraine fatigue is setting in, very important to show that we're, we're with them for the long haul. The release of the Zelensky video comes a day after British Prime Minister Boris Johnson made a surprise visit to meet with the Ukrainian president in Kyiv. Johnson stressed the need to keep supporting Ukraine after nearly four months of war when he returned to England. It would be a catastrophe if Putin won. It would be a catastrophe if he was able to secure uh, the, the land bridge, uh, the, the, the cities in the south that he has uh, to hold the Donbass. That's what he wants. We've got to make it clear that we're supporting the Ukrainians in their ambition, which their country is right behind every single one, to expel the Russians, expel Putin's armies from uh, everything that he's obtained since February the 24th. Meanwhile, EU leaders are expected at a summit next week to grant Ukraine candidate status following Friday's recommendation from the bloc's executive, putting Kyiv on course to realize an aspiration seen as out of reach before the invasion, even if actual membership could take years. Certainly the scale of, of these crimes, uh, the systematic nature of them, you know, it, it very clearly appears to be crimes against humanity. You, you have war crimes that have been committed. So, you know, it, it is, it, I, I, as I said, unfortunately it runs, I think, the whole gamut of violations of international humanitarian law. To me, the question is, um, why would you attack a kindergarten? You know, so unless there is very good evidence that there was a military um, uh, in that, uh, that Ukrainian military were using it, then it is a war crime. But it also speaks to the mentality of the, the Russian forces to attack a kindergarten. The Supreme Court of Iowa on Friday ruled that the state's constitution does not give a fundamental right to abortion. The 5-2 ruling reverses its own finding from four years ago and revives a law requiring women to wait 24 hours after an initial appointment before getting an abortion. A Planned Parenthood affiliate said the group was deeply disappointed by the ruling but also noted the ruling still leaves room to challenge the 24-hour waiting period in the lower court on the grounds that it imposes an undue burden on women seeking abortion. Definitely have a long road ahead of us. Sheena Dooley works for Planned Parenthood at North Central States. We've been taking steps to kind of prepare for everything that's going on in the abortion landscape within our five state affiliate. Um, and one of those things, for instance, is our patient navigators. So people can contact us and we can help them navigate and find the, the closest place to get the care that they need um, when, when that situation happens. The news out of Iowa comes as the U.S. Supreme Court is expected to soon issue a major ruling that could dramatically curtail abortion rights at the national level. Since the leak of a draft opinion indicating the top court is set to overturn Roe v. Wade, eight-foot-tall fencing has been erected around the building, which remains in lockdown. Unlike other government buildings in Washington, D.C., no members of the public have been allowed into the U.S. Supreme Court since March of 2020. For abortion rights protester Guido Reichstadter, who spent a night in jail after locking himself to the fence in early June, the fencing is a sign of how out of touch the conservative justices are with public sentiment. 
Police in Brazil said Friday that remains found in the Amazon rainforest are those of British journalist Dom Phillips, who vanished alongside indigenous expert Bruno Pereira weeks ago. Authorities also said a search is underway for a man suspected of involvement in Phillips' killing. Phillips and Pereira disappeared in the remote Javari Valley, close to the border with Peru and Colombia. Days ago, police recovered Phillips' remains in the jungle after they were led to the grave by a fisherman who confessed to killing the two men. The case set off global alarm, putting pressure on Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro and stirring concern in British Parliament. Phillips, a freelance reporter who had written for The Guardian and The Washington Post, was doing research for a book on the trip with Pereira, a former head of isolated and recently contacted tribes at federal indigenous affairs agency FUNAI. Police said their investigation suggested there were more individuals involved beyond the fishermen, and that they were now looking for a man named Jefferson da Silva Lima. Authorities also say the fisherman and his brother, who is also in custody, acted alone. However, a local indigenous group who was involved with the search said it had informed the federal police numerous times since late 2021 that there was an organized crime group operating in the Javari Valley. Police said they were still searching for the boat Phillips and Pereira were traveling in when they were last seen alive. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Saturday recommended COVID-19 vaccines for children as young as six months, allowing a nationwide rollout to start next week. The move came after a panel of advisors to the CDC voted unanimously to recommend COVID-19 vaccines for children as young as six months old. Members of the 12-person panel said the decision marks a major step forward. There are 18.7 million children that we just now authorized to get vaccinated. There have been over 2 million cases in these children, 200 plus deaths. And I think an interesting aspect is we don't know what's coming. We don't know what's going to really happen with BA4 or 5 and then what other variants we may see. But I feel comfortable in, in saying that I that vaccinating will be a benefit, a net benefit. On Friday, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines for the younger age groups. That led the White House to say they would begin shipping out vaccines as early as possible. But it's not known what the demand will be. Yeah. Federal data shows only about 29% of children aged 5 to 11 are fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, Dr. Beth Bell, another doctor on the CDC advisory panel, that the decision to vaccinate younger kids was done for a very specific reason. We don't know everything that there is to be known about this. Yes, the data may change, but we have a bottom line here, which is that this infection kills children and we have an opportunity to prevent that. And every parent will want to consider that calculus as well. I've never gotten that.